Good morning. Maria Subui. I'm happy to be here. Niko na furaha kuwa hapa. And God bless you all. Na Mungu awabariki wote. Amen. In the last few days I noticed that uh, there is great need for uh, driving out demons here. Eh eh, siku chache zilizopita nimekuja kugundua kwamba kwa kweli kuna hitaji kubwa la kufukuza mapepo sehemu hii. There are quite a number of people who have demons. Kuna kuna baadhi ya watu wako na mapepo wengi sana including some Christians. Hata tunapojumuisha wale wa Kristo. So uh, today I want to talk about what are important when we want to cast out demons from people completely. Nataka tuzungumuze kuhusu zile vipengele muhimu ambazo zinaweza kuzikakusaidia ukitaka kufukuza mapepo ya kwenda na ya kwende kabisa. Now before I enter there I want to say something. Na kabla nizungumuze hayo nataka kuzungumza kitu fulani. It's important to cast out demons. Ni mvyema kufukuza mapepo. But at the same time it's very important to care about the newcomers. Lakini pia ni la muhimu kuwajali wale ambao ni wapi walio walio jiunga na sisi. The fact we want to drive out demons from some people. Ingawa pia tunahitaji tufukuze mapepo kutoka kwa watu. Doesn't eliminate the need to talk to the people who are open to Jesus. Basi yo haipunguzi lile hitaji la kuwajali wale watu ambao wanataka kwenda kwa Kristo. I notice a, a problem. Niligundua tatizo hilo. Like in after the meetings Manake kwa mfano baada ya mkutano wa kule nje when the people were taken here wakati watu walipoletwa hapa they were casting out demons walikuwa wakifukuzwa mapepo what happened was all the rest of the people were just watching kile kilichofanyika ni kwamba wale watu wote ambao walikuwa hapa walikuwa wamekuja tu kutazama na and no one talked to the newcomers who were willing to believe in Jesus na hakuna yeyote aliyekuwa anazungumza kwa wale wapi wanaotaka kumwamini Kristo I want to say that both are important. Nataka kusema kwamba yote ni ya muhimu. One doesn't take the place of the other one. Basi moja haikuji kwa niaba ya nyingine. Now, if there is no choice, kama basi hakuna chaguo lingine. One possibility, njia moja ambayo inaweza tuwezesha is that one group, maybe the people who are willing to believe in Jesus, just go back to the open area behind here, the open area. Basi kile tutakachofanya ni hiki, wale ambao watakuwa wanataka kumpokea Kristo Yesu, tutawaondoa hapa tuwapeleke kule nyuma. And then someone will talk to them about Jesus. Na sasa mtu akaanza kuwazungumzia kuhusu Kristo. Because if we just drive out demons, these people don't have a chance to hear. Manake sasa tukiendelea hapa na kile kipindi cha kuwafukuza mapepo, wale wenye wameenda kuzungumziwa kuhusu Kristo wasiyasikie. Then we are losing the chance to reach out to them. Na sasa tunapoteza muda ili tuwafikie. And I hope that there will be people who are who want to follow up on these newcomers. Nataka kuamini kwamba kuna watu ambao wamejitoa ili kuwafuatilia wale ambao ni wapya katika Kristo. To ask them about the relationship with God, wawaulize uhusiano wao na Mungu and help them with the relationship with God, na kuwasaidia pia na uhusiano wao na Mungu and lead them to prayer na wawaongoze katika maombi and teach them how to follow Jesus na kuwafundisha jinsi ya kumfuata Kristo and encourage them to come back na pia kuahimiza wakuje tena kanisani now some people will be here driving out demons watu wengine watakuwa hapa wakiwafukuza mapepo i want to ask who likes to who wants to follow up on the newcomers and go to the back and talk to them about Jesus relationship with God. Aswali hili liko kwenu. Kuna wale watakao kuwa hapo wakifukuza mapepo. Je, ni wangapi ambao wako na roho ya kusaidia wale ambao ni wapi wanataka kumpokea Kristo? Nani atakuwa tayari kuzungumza na kwa ishara ya mkono? So who are willing? Okay. Ni wangapi ambao wako na roho? So then tonight when there are people who express interest to come. Sasa uh, tukishamaliza mkutano wa kule wale watu ambao wataonyesha nia ya kukuja. Once we find out that some need to be exercised, driven de demons driven out. Na pia tutakapopata kwamba kuna zoezi la kufukuza watu mapepo, then we separate the group. Tutagawa hizi vikundi ziwe mbili. Now, I don't know which is better. Sijui ni gani Because nzuri. everyone comes here, manake kila mmoja anakuja hapa. And then maybe you talk to them. I think the first thing is to talk to them about what is believing in Jesus. Naamini kwamba kitu kizuri cha kwanza ni kuwazungumza kuhusu kumwamini Kristo Yesu. What is repentance of our sin? 
kutubu dhambi na maana gani and trusting in Jesus forgiveness na kuamini Kristo kwa ajili ya msamaha and help them to really believe in Jesus na tuwasaidie ili wakaelewe wakaamini Kristo and tell them how to follow Jesus na kuambia jinsi ya kumfuata Kristo so i don't know maybe you should do this first so naamini kwamba tutafanya hili kwanza and then and then uh, you pray for them and see if they have evil spirit sasa ukisha wazungumzi ya basi utaanza kuwaombea au waone kama wako na mapepo when there are people who have demons kama kuna watu ambao wako na mapepo then the rest will be taken out to the back <coughs> wale ambao wako na mapepo basi watabaki hapa na wale ambao hawana mapepo wapelekwe huko nyuma wazungumziwe mambo ya Kristo Yesu because when people want to believe in Jesus manake watu wakitaka kumwamini Kristo Yesu we don't just tell them about the sins sio kwamba tunawaeleza tu kuhusu dhambi peke yake we don't just tell them to pray hatuambi tu waombe we will ask them tunawauliza are there something that can block your relationship with god je kuna chochote kile ambacho kinaweza kuzuia uhusiano wako na mungu what are something maybe your family member might stop you coming to church kama kuna kitu labda kuna mmoja katika familia anaweza kuzuia wewe usije kanisani and how can we help you to grow better na tunaweza tukakusaidia vipi ili ukanawiri vyema katika mambo ya Kristo do you want to grow in jesus ungelipenda kukua katika Kristo so there should be conversation lazima tuwe na mazungumzo to know how they are kujua vile walivyo and help them with the problems na tuwasaidie na matatizo yao and help them to follow jesus na tuwasaidie kumfuata kristo so there should be two way communication lazima tuwe na hizi njia mbili za mawasiliano they tell you the problem wakwambie mahitaji yao and then we will respond to them na wewe sasa unaitikia mahitaji yao so now do you understand the importance of this je unaelewa umuhimu wa haya yes yeah for instance If there are 20 people willing to come here, kwa mfano basi kama kuna watu 20 ambao wako tayari kuingia hapa, and five have demons, na watano wao wako na mapepo. But the needs of the 15 who don't have demons need to be met. Lakini pia mahitaji ya hawa wengine kumi na watano lazima watu wakutane nayo. So we don't want to leave them unattended and just care about those who have demons. Sio vyema tuwache watu kumi na tano tunashughulikia watu tano walio na mapepo peke yao lazima hawa pia tuwashughulikie sawa. This is true not only for these few days of the meetings. Sio tu mambo haya itafanyika siku za mkutano huu peke yake. It's also true for the future. Hata kwa siku ambazo zinakuja. For instance in a certain meeting, kwa mfano katika mkutano fulani, someone have demons. Mtu ako na mapepo. We don't stop the meeting. Hatusimamishi mkutano. And just drive the demons. Hatuanze kufukuza mapepo. We have a couple people take this person to a next place. Aha, lazima tukue na watu wachukue huyo mtu amweke kando to drive our demons. Wafukuze hayo mapepo. And this meeting continues. Na huyo mkutano nao huo unaendelea. So do you understand the need of kwa, both sides? Kwa hivyo tunaelewa sasa umuhimu wa hizi sehemu mbili ya kwanza mtu wa mapepo apelekwe nje afukuzwe lakini ndani mkutano ufanye namna gani uendelee okay very good now the next thing i will talk about how to be able to drive out demons from a person completely eh eh nataka pia sasa kuzungumzia jinsi unavyoweza kufukuza mtu mapepo yaishe kabisa ndani mwake because sometimes you notice some people you drive out demons next time he still have demons manake mtu unaweza kugundua kwamba unaweza fukuza mtu mapepo leo ndio yule yule utamfukuza kesho ndio yule yule utafukuza mapepo siku nyingine na jesus has talked about this na yesu pia alizungumza mambo haya there was one person that the demons was driven out kulikuwa na mtu ambaye mapepo yalifukuzwa ndani mwake and the inside was clean up na ndani mwake mkasafishwa mkawa safi but then this demon went around and find a place to rest na hawa mapepo walipoondoka wakatembea tembea wakapata mahali pa kupumzika but the demon could not find a place to rest lakini mapepo hawa hawakupata mahali pa kupumzika kabisa so what it did is find seven other more stronger demons ili pepo lipofukuzwa likazunguka zunguka likashindwa pa likaenda likaleta wengine saba and enter the person again na wakamwingia wote kwa huyo mtu sasa so if the person's life is not protected kwamba maisha ya huyo mtu kama hayaja zungukwa the demons will come back mapepo bado watarudi ndani yake or they have never left totally ama kwa mjia ingine tunasema kwamba hawa mapepo hawajamuondoka kabisa 
Now Jesus has said in John chapter 5 verse 14. Yoa, eh, yesu anasema katika Yohana mlango wa 5 mstari wa 14. Yohana mlango wa 5 mstari wa 14. Jesus heal a man with 38 years sickness. Yesu anamponya mwanaume aliyekuwa na magonjo kwa miaka 38. After Jesus healed the man, baada Yesu kumponya huyu mbaba, he said to him, anamwambia, sin no more, usitende dhambi tena, lest the worst thing will happen to you. Ili kwamba kama utatenda dhambi basi mabaya zaidi yatakutendekea. What it means is if this person continues to sin, kama huyu mtu ataendelea kutenda dhambi, the worst thing will happen to him. Mambo ya mambo ya mabaya ya kiajabu itaendelea kumtendekea. It could be sickness. Mambo haya yanaweza kuwa ni ugonjwa. It could be demons. Yanaweza kuwa ni mapepo or other problems in the life. Ama matatizo mengine katika dunia. So we know that sins will give the devil a foothold. Tunaona kwamba dhambi basi zitakuwa ni njia ya mapepo kupitia tena. So when we drive out demons from people, tunapofukuza mapepo kutoka kwa watu, what should we do? Tunafanya nini? Now, for many people they just pay attention to casting out demons in Jesus name. Kwa watu wengi huwa wanasema tu tufukuze mapepo kwa jina la Yesu. Now, this is the spiritual side. Who hii ni sehemu ya kiroho. There is also a side of the soul and their daily life. Kuna pia naf, na, eh, kuna upande wa nafsi katika maisha ya kawaida. We have the spirit and our soul. Kuna upande wa kiroho na upande wa kimwili. The soul of the person means his mind, his will and his feelings. Aha. Upande wa nafsi wa kimwili inamaanisha hisia za mtu, mawazo ya mtu na akili za mtu. Now his mind might have a lot of negative things. Akili za mtu zinaweza kuwa na mawazo mengi kinyume. He might even complain to God. Anaweza hata kulalamikia Mungu. And he might not agree with the Bible. Ama hawezi wakati mwingine hawezi akakubaliana na Biblia. Or his thinking has a lot of sinful factors. Kufikiria kwake basi kuko na mafikirio mabaya. And his will maybe he just want money and women. Na sasa unapata kwamba hisia zake zimemuongoza tu kwa wanawake na pesa. And he's feeling that he might be unhappy a lot of times or angry. Na hisia zake pia wakati mwingine zinamfanya na kuwa na hasira kabisa. So when the soul has a lot of problem and also the lifestyle has a lot of problem. Na kama basi mwili wake na jinsi anavyoishi kuna matatizo mengi. For instance, if the se- a person has sexual immorality, kwa mfano kama mtu ako na tabia mbaya ya uzinifu, and have sinful way of life, ako na njia ya dhambi katika maisha yake. You cast out the demons from them. Ukifukuza watu kama hao mapepo, the demons will not stay away. Mapepo hawataka mbali na e. Because the life has not been taken care of. Manake maisha yake haija shugulikiwa. So when we drive out demons from people, tunapofukuza mapepo kutoka kwa watu, we should pay attention to a few things. Ni lazima pia tu wangalifu kwa vitu vichache hizi now whether we do it before we drive out demons or afterwards is up to you mambo haya basi ni jukumu lako waweza kuyazingatia kabla ufukuze mapepo ama ukishamaliza kufukuza mapepo it's up to the situation sasa inategemea ni hali uliomo if the person is totally out of control kama mtu basi hawezi hawezi pimi hawezi zuilika it's hard to communicate with the person ni vigumu sana basi kuwasiliana na huyo mtu so then we try out, drive out the demons first. Kwa hivyo mtu kama huyu ambaye amepagawa, kitu cha kwanza ufukuze mapepo kwanza. When we cannot communicate with the person and help his life, kama hatuwezi kama hatuwezi kuwasiliana maisha ya huyo mtu, generally actually not all the demons have been driven out. Inamaanisha kwamba mapepo yote hayajaondolewa. It's just some of the demons that, that manifest that manifest itself has driven out. Ni mapepo tu ambaye yanajifanya kwamba yamefukuzwa ya maenda. And then afterwards we want to talk talk to them about their life. Tukimaliza hayo basi tuzungumzie kuhusu maisha yao. The first thing we want to talk about is his relationship with God. Cha kwanza ambacho lazima tuzungumzie ni uhusiano wake na Mungu. Because if his relationship with God has problems, manake kama uhusiano wake na Mungu uko na matatizo, the demons will not stay away. Mapepo hayatakaa kando na yeye. So we can help the person. Kwa hivyo tunaweza tukamsaidia mtu that he believe in God is he that God loves him je anaamini kwa Mungu na Mungu anampenda that God is almighty kwamba Mungu ni mkuu God cares about him Mungu anamjali 
God wants the best to happen to him. Mungu anahitaji mema ya mtendekee. And God can bless his whole life. Na Mungu anaweza kubariki maisha yake yote. And following God is the best thing that can happen to him. Na kumfuata Mungu ndio kitu kizuri ambacho anaweza fanya. Does he believe that? Je, anaamini hayo? Now many people believe in Jesus. Ndio watu wengi wanaamini Kristo Yesu. But they might not believe that Jesus is the best that can happen to them. Lakini wakati mwingine huwa hawaamini kwamba Yesu ndicho kitu cha dhamana maishani mwao. Because they might say, manake wanaweza kusema, I want Jesus to bring me to heaven. Nataka Yesu anilete mbinguni. But for my life I want to pursue money and women. Lakini katika maisha yangu nataka kutafuta wanawake na pesa. So For instance some people they don't want to ask God to guide them to marry which person. Ehe unapata watu kama hao huanga hawaombi Mungu awasaidie kupata hata mchumba. Because they might say manake wanaweza kusema if God chooses this person for me kama mtu atachagua huyu awe wangu if this is a person God chooses kama huyu ndio mtu ambaye Mungu amechagua this person might be too boring. Mtu huyu anaweza kuwa mtu ambaye si mzuri sana. But I find someone outside, lakini nitatafuta mwingine kule nje. The person is more interesting. Mtu ambaye anavutia. The Christians are too boring. Mkristo huyu avutii sana. So many Christians don't believe that the person, you know, selected by God is the per- best person. Kwa hivyo watu wengi huanga hawaamini kwamba yule mchumba ambaye Mungu amewachagulia ndio ndio ambaye Mungu amependezwa naye. And if this is a lifestyle of God that God wants us to follow. Na kama basi huo ndio huu ndio mtindo ambao Mungu anataka tuufuate. Some people may think my lifestyle is the best. Watu wengine wanaweza kufikiria kwamba maisha yao ndio mema. God's lifestyle is too boring. Ya kwamba mtindo wa kimaisha ya Mungu ni mbaya. Too much prayer, maombi mengi. So people might not agree with God in everything. Kwa hivyo inamaanisha kwamba watu hawatakubaliana na Mungu katika kila kitu. Sema when they, amen. When they, when they don't agree with God in everything. Kama hawakubaliani na Mungu katika kila jambo. Those are the areas that he give a foothold to the devil. Kwa hivyo hizo ndio sehemu ambazo zinampa pengo shetani kuingilia. Whenever anyone doesn't like God. Kama mtu hampendi Mungu. I want to say this even Christians might not like God in every way. Nataka kusema hivi hata wakristo kuna wakati mwingine hawampendi Mungu katika kila sehemu zote. Many Christians say I like God to bring me to heaven. Watu wengi wanasema tunataka Yesu anilete kule mbinguni. But I like something else. Lakini kuna kila kingine ambacho ninakipenda. So many Christians really don't have Jesus as the king. Kwa hivyo watu wengi hawana Kristo Yesu kama mfalme. Now you might say that is very difficult. Unaweza kusema kwamba haya hiyo ni magumu. But that is a process of growth. Lakini hizo ndizo sehemu za ukuaji. I use an illustration. Natumia mifano. Now for a healthy Christian, Mkristo ambaye ni Mkristo ambaye ako na afya. He like God very much and he accept God's way very much. Anampenda Mungu sana na anakubali njia za Mungu zaidi. There might be some areas you need to take care of. Kuna sehemu zingine ambazo lazima ushughulikie. But there is a small portion of his life. Lakini hiyo ni sehemu chache katika maisha yake. Compared to another Christian, unapomfananisha na mtu ambaye sio Mkristo. Most of his life is following the world. Maisha yake mengi ni kufuata ulimwengu. He just follow God on Sunday. Na sasa anamfuatanga Mungu siku ya Jumapili pekee yake. Just a little part following Jesus. Then his life has a lot of foothold to the devil. Maisha yake mengi yako na tundu nyingi za shetani kuingilia. Let me ask you. Wasanii waulize, is your life mostly dedicated to God? Je, maisha yenu yote mmeachilia kwa Mungu? Or just a small part dedicated to God? Ama ni sehemu chache tu ambayo imeachiliwa kwa Mungu? No. Now, I hope you all are dedicated to God. Ninataka kutumainia kwamba maisha yenu yote mmepeana kwa Mungu. But I know for a fact. I know for a fact. Lakini najua kwa kwa maana hii many many Christians don't love God that much. Wakristo wengi hawampendi Mungu zaidi. Many Christians will love God a little bit. Wakristo wengi watampenda Mungu kiasi tu. And love the world a lot. Na wapende dunia sana. So those are something we need to take care of. Hayo ndio mambo ambayo lazima tuyashughulikie. And we need to help people. Lazima tusaidie watu. 
And you might notice that people who have demons na utagundua kwamba watu ambao wako na mapepo a lot of times there's a lot of anger unapata kwamba kila wakati wanakuwa na hasira a lot of sins wako na dhambi nyingi and don't like god hawampendi mungu so there's something we need to continue to help them ni kitu ambacho sisi kama wakristo lazima tuendelee kuwasaidia and also about the relationship with God na pia katika uhusiano wao na mungu many people think of god as very stern like a judge very strict uh-huh. watu wengi huwa wanafikiria Mungu ni kama wa hakimu yani mtu ambaye hako na msimamo kabisa they think God is always stern with people and are just pointing out the sins wanafikiria kwamba Mungu ni mtu yule ambaye anyonyesha watu vidole kwa sababu ya dhambi but the bible tell us lakini maandiko yanatuambia he loves us very much anatupenda zaidi he cares about us very much anatujali zaidi he wants to bless us anataka kutubariki this is very important for our relationship Himi with god ni muhimu kwa uhusiano wetu na mungu sema amen amen if people always think oh i'm afraid of god kama watu wanasema ah mimi nina uoga kwa mungu now we fear god and honor god na sisi sasa tunamuhisi mungu na kumheshimu and love god na kumpenda but we're not afraid of god lakini si kwamba tumemuogopa tuko na uoga kwa ajili ya Mungu. Now fear God means to honor him. Kumti Mungu inamaanisha kumheshimu. I did not sin. Ya kwamba asifanyi dhambi. Fear God means God don't come to me. Sio kwamba kumti Mungu ni kusema kwamba Mungu sitaki uje kwangu. I'm afraid of you. Mimi nimekuogopa. I'm afraid you might not like me. Nimeogopa manake kwa hautanipenda. I hope we all have a positive view of God. Ninaamini kwamba tutakuwa na hisia ambayo ni mzuri kwa Mungu. That we like God very much. Ya kwamba tutampenda Mungu zaidi. God is wonderful. Mungu ni wa ajabu. Yesu. Yesu. Yesu Yesu Yesu. Yesu Yesu Yesu. Yesu. Yesu 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 Yesu
Unawaza kinyume. Negative feeling. Uko na hisia kinyume. Problematic lifestyle. Uko na maisha ambayo ni matatizo tupu. So all this will affect people. Hizi vitu zote nina alizo ziezabu zitari, zinakuadhiri. Now we, if we drive our demons from some people. Unafukuza mapepo kutoka kwa mtu. And they go home. Na wanaenda nyumbani. And the moment they come, come go home. Na wanapo enda nyumbani. They will start yelling at the family members. Na wataanta kupigia wa, they, wa ngine kelele. They start to be angry. Wanaanza kuwa na hasira. The demons will come back. Mapepo ya tarudi. And it's the same for Christians too. Na ivo ivo pia kwa Christayo. We have to take care of our life. Ni lazima tushughulikie maisha yetu. And do not give devil the devil a foothold. Na sasa usipee ibilisi nafasi. So we have to listen to the person. Ni lazima tukamsikilize mtu. Are there some sins that are affecting them? Je, je, kuna dhambi ambazo zinatuadhiri? Are there some sins that control the life? Je, kuna dhambi ambazo zinadhibiti maisha yetu? And how he can overcome the sins? Na jinsi anavyoweza kushinda dhambi hizo? Now the key to overcome the sins. Ufungue wa kushinda dhambi. Please remember this. Kumbuka haya. First, remember God is very good. Ya kwanza kumbuka Mungu ni mwema. God is full of blessings. Mungu amejawa na baraka. God is also holy. Mungu pia ni mtakatifu. And our life are special. Na maisha yetu ni specially. My life is very precious. Maisha yangu ni ya thamani. If I love God and follow God, kama nitampenda Mungu na kumfuata, my life will go better and better. Maisha yangu yatakuwa mazuri zaidi. But if I sin, lakini nikitenda dhambi, I would destroy my life. Nitaharibu maisha yangu. I use an illustration. Nitatumia mfano. Now I go to different countries to bless different countries. Aha, mimi huenda katika mataifa mengi ili kuwabariki. Now if I go out to some places, nikienda sehemu nyingine, and I get angry with the people, na ninakasirishwa na hao watu. When they don't do things my way, kama hawatendi vitu kulingana na njia yangu, or I took some of the money that I'm supposed to give to the people. Ama kuna wale wanaouliza pesa na sijawapea. If I do any of these things, kama nitafanya hivyo, God will not like me. Mungu hata nipenda. God will not bless me. Mungu hata nibariki. And also people will not like me. Na pia watu hawata nipenda. And it can destroy my doors to the nations. Na pia wataharibu milango zangu zote za kwenda kwenye mataifa mengine. My whole life can be destroyed, my ministry can be destroyed. Maisha yangu na hata huduma wangu uta Ribika, now, if, amen. if that happens to me, would you be very sad about that? Je, hira kama lita mutendeke ya pia njimu tawuzunika. But I treasure my life. Lakini pia ninadamini maisha yangu. I'm not saying I'm more special than other people. Sisemi kuwa ma mimi ni mtu specially kushinda wengine. I'm saying because of God's love, Everyone's life is precious. Ninasema kwa sababu ya upendo wa Mungu maisha ya kila mmoja ni ya muhimu. So I don't want to waste my life. Kwa hivyo sitaki kuharibu maisha yangu yote. You don't want to throw money into the sea, right? The river, right? Je, ungelipenda kuchukue kibeti chako kilichoko na pesa utupe kwenye ziwa? If someone throws his money into the river, you say, "Please give money to me." Kama mtu atatupa hela zake kule kwenye ziwa so unasema nipe nipe nipe. But for many people they throw their own life into the river. Lakini watu wengi wanatupa maisha yao yote kwenye mto. They waste their own life. Wameharibu maisha yao wenyewe. Do you want to waste your life? Je, ungelipenda kuharibu maisha yako? No. So that is why I say God loves me so much. Ndio sababu nimesema Mungu ananipenda zaidi. And my life is so precious. Na maisha yangu ni maisha ya dhamani. I don't want to sin even one time. Sitaki kutenda dhambi hata mara moja. Any moment I have any sinful thought. Wakati wowote unapokuwa na mawazo mabaya, immediately I will take care of it. Eh, wakati wote unapokuwa na mawazo mabaya, lazima uyashughulikie. For instance, kwa mfano, if in my heart I don't like someone, katika moyo wangu labda simpendi mtu fulani immediately i will say hivyo hivyo nitasema one sin can destroy the whole person oh dhambi moja tu yaweza kuharibu maisha yangu if i don't like someone kama simpendi mtu my attitude will change ah mawazo yangu yatabadilika it can affect my relationship with that person na inaweza haribu uhusiano wangu na yeye and with some other people na watu wengine hata and affect my relationship with god na pia ikaharibu uhusiano wangu na mungu and affect my inner peace na pia ikaharibu amani yangu ya kidani so if someone has any problem kwa hivyo kama mtu ako na matatizo i don't want to dislike him 
Sitaki kwamba nikamchukie. That is his problem. Hiyo leo ni tatizo lake. Yesterday I talk about this teaching. Jana nilizungumzia kuhusu mafundisho haya. Don't eat garbage. Ya kwamba usikule taka. The garbage includes the bad things of this person. Taka inahusisha mawazo mabaya kwa huyu mtu. And includes how I dislike the person. Na pia inahusisha jinsi vile simpendi huyu mtu. So if this person has some problem, kama mtu huyu hako na matatizo, if this represent his problem, kwa mfano huyu ni mtu na kona matatizo, I don't want to eat it. Sitaki ni kule hayo matatizo yake. I don't want to carry it. Na sitaki pia ni abebe. I want to put it down. Na taka ni iweke chini. So that my life is full. Full of joy and peace. Ili kwamba maisha yangu ya kuwe na amani na ya kuwe na fulani. Then I can say. Na hapo ni naiza imba. Yesu. Yesu. Now I want to say this. Na tawa kusema ili. If in your heart you don't like someone. Kama ndani ya mwe wako haumpendi mtu. It's hard for you to be very joyful. Ni vikumu sana kuwa na fulani. Sini ukweli. So any kind of sin inside me. Kwa hivyo kama dhambi za zote ziko ndani mwake. Uh, I use another illustration. Nitatumia mfano mwingine tena. For men. Kwa wanaume. Sometimes when a man see a sexy woman. Ah, uh, wanaume mnasikia? Wakati wanaume wanapoona binti amevutia sana. They will say it is very hard to take care of the sinful w- thought. Watasema kwamba ai ni vigumu mimi kuzuia mawazo ya kwanza kufikiria kuhusu huyo binti. But I say my life is so precious. Lakini yeye husema kwamba maisha yangu ni ya thamani. I can bless so many people. Na ninaweza bariki watu wengi. The same will affect my relationship with Dhambi God. Dhambi zitaharibu uhusiano wangu na Mungu. And it will also affect my relationship with my wife. Na pia itaharibu uhusiano wake na bibi yake. Mke wake. Now this is another picture. Picha nyingine ya mke wako. Meiona picha nyingine ya mke wake. Now this is another picture. I and her, she and I walk on the beach together. So now, so hiyo ni picha ya mkewe walikuwa wameenda kujivinjari kujivinjari kama hiyo ni kiluko. Walikuwa wameenda kujivinjari kule kule. I don't want to do anything that harm my marriage or my life. Sitaki nifanye lolote ambalo litaharibu uhusiano wangu katika ndoa yangu. So if I see a sexy woman, ninapomwona binti wa kuvutia, immediately I say I don't want to think about her. At nasema kwamba sitaki kufikiria kumuuza. I will respect the person as a person. Nitampa heshima kama mwanadamu wa kawaida. Not to look at her as a sexy woman. Sio tu kumtazama na kwa sababu amejipodoa podupodu sasa unapotelea mawazo yako huko. When I keep my life clean, ninapoweka maisha yangu kuwa safi, God will bless my marriage and my whole life. Mungu atabariki ndoa yangu na maisha yangu yote. Sema amen. So, my point is the moment I have any sinful thought, kila ninachozungumzia ni kwamba wakati wote ambapo niko na mawazo mabaya, the moment I'm unhappy about anything, wakati ambapo sijafurahishwa kwa mfano chochote, chochote, I will take care of it. Nitashughulikia jambo hilo before i let the sin come out kabla niachilie dhambi zikaniingie now many people don't pay attention to the sins watu wengi huanga hawatazami na kuangalia kimakini dhambi when they notice they are unhappy with someone wakigundua kwamba wamekasirishwa na mtu every time they look at that person kila wakati itakuwa ni kuangalianga yule mtu ambaye wamechukia Anger. Anamwangalia na macho mabaya karibu amgonge nguvu. They want to do something bad to the person. Anataka kumfanyia mambo ya kiuovu. And if this person does anything wrong, na kama mtu huyo atafanya kitu chochote kibaya, they will yell at this person. Atampigia kelele or do some, you know, physical action. Hata wabadilishane mikono. Because they don't take care of the sins inside them. Kwa sababu hawashughuliki dhambi ambazo zinakaa ndani mwao. They let the sins come out to the mouth. Wanawaja wanawaacha dhambi zinatokelezea kwenye mdomo. They let the sin come to the eyes. Wanawaacha dhambi zinakuja kwenye macho. And come to the action. Na inaileta kwa matendo. Now some people told me in the church sometimes there are fights. Eh watu wengine wameniambia kwamba kuna wakati katika kanisa watu wanapigana. People argue with each other. Watu wanakuwa na kuzungumza au ku Bishana. Kubishana kidogo. Now when people disagree, na kama watu basi hawasikilizani, do they have to yell at each other? Je, ni lazima wapigiane kelele? No. We can just talk. 
Tunaweza tu kuzungumza. We don't have to be angry. Sio lazima ukasirishwe. We just take time to talk and discuss. Tunachukua muda ili tuongee tujadiliane. No need to be angry. Hakuna haja ya kukasirikia mtu kanisani. Can you say it with me? Nataka urudie mambo haya nyuma. No need to be angry. Hakuna haja ya kukasirika. Hakuna haja ya kukasirika. No need to yell at people. Hamna haja ya kupigia watu kelele. Hamna haja ya kupigia watu kelele. No need to hit someone. Hamna haja ya kugonga mtu ngumi. Hamna haja ya kugonga mtu ngumi. Now do you understand this? Mnaelewa mambo haya? When we yes, are aware of the sins immediately take care of that. Ya kwamba unapohisi kuna kitu kinakuja kwenye roho yako, shughulikie jambo hilo haraka haraka. That's the secret to overcoming sins. Hiyo ndio siri ya kushinda dhambi. Nasema amen. Amen. Listen that simple? Je, sio rahisi? Very simple. Siri rahisi? Now, let me tell you, this is a wisdom that God has given me. Eh, uh-huh. wacha niwaambie. Wisdom hii ni hekima ambayo Mungu amenipa. I thank God for that. Na nashukuru Mungu kwa hayo. God gave me very simple ways. Mungu ananipa njia rahisi to overcome sins. Ili kushinda dhambi. Is to take care of the sins while the sins are in my head. Eh, njia rahisi ya kushinda dhambi ni kushughulikia dhambi zile kama bado ziko kwenye kichwa chako hauzitoi nje. And believe that God loves me. Na uamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda. My life is precious. Na maisha yangu ni ya thamani. And I pray to God. Na ninamuomba Mungu. And I've rejected the sin nakataa dhambi and yesterday i told you the, the key to overcome being uh, you know how we are affected by people na pia jana nilikuambia ufunguo ambao unaweza kufanya ushinde matatizo ya watu is not to eat garbage sio kukula taka now these are simple teachings god has given me haya ni mafundisho rahisi ambayo mungu ameniwa very simple rahisi mno you understand it and then you can apply it ukielewa basi unaweza iweka kwenye matendo are you willing to get the sins out from your head je uko tayari kutoa dhambi zitoke kwenye kichwa chako get it all out yani uzitoe kabisa my hatred for someone au umemchukia mtu my dislike of someone unaweka nje humpendi mtu unatoa unatoa my love for the world upendo katika ulimwengu unaotoa unaotoa I'm crucified with Jesus. Nimesulubishwa na Kristo Yesu. It's no longer I who live. Sio mimi yule ninayeishi sasa. But it's Christ who lives in me. Lakini ni Yesu anayeishi ndani mwangu. Sema amen. Hallelujah. Okay, now other garbage people might have inside them. Other garbage, other trash. Aha. Kuna pia tena uchafu mwingine unaweza kuwa ndani mwangu. Negative thinking and negative emotions. Unaweza kuwa na mawazo mabaya na unaweza kuwa na hisia mbaya. Now Okay, let us all stand up now. I am taka tusimame wote tena. I know the weather is warm. Yesu, 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 Yesu. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Kindi. Okay. Now, let me say that for many people negative thinking is a habit. Wacha niseme kwamba watu wengine mawazo kinyume imekuwa ni mazoea. Now, what does it mean by negative thinking? Ina maana gani tunaposema mawazo kinyume? Oh, life is difficult. Ai, maisha ni magumu. The people are bad. Watu ni waovu. Uh, the, the world is not good na hata dunia si njema god is not good na hata mungu si mzuri it's hard to do hard work ni vigumu kufanya kazi ngumu and people don't like me na hata watu hawanipendi na have you sometimes had this negative thinking inside you eh yes. wewe katika maisha yako ushawahi kuwa na mawazo kama haya yes Yeah or I don't like my husband or wife. Ama usiwe kwamba mimi simpendi mke wangu, simpendi mume wangu. I don't like the lazy Christians. Mimi sipendi wale wa Kristayo ambao ni wazembe. So very often people have negative thinking. So unapata watu wakati mwingi wako na mawazo kinyume. Now what a positive thinking. Kwa hiyo mawazo kinyume ni yapi? God is good. Mungu ni mwema. God is almighty. Mungu ni mkuu. God loves me. Mungu anipenda. God wants to bless us. Mungu anataka kutubariki. Any problem is solvable in God. Tatizo lolote basi liko na, na jawabu kwenye Mungu. God can help me in all problems. Mungu anaweza kunisaidia kwenye matatizo yangu yote. Any problem, no problem. 
Ati unaona kuna shida lakini ukiwa na Mungu unasema hakuna shida. I can rejoice in the Lord. Naweza kufurahia kwa Bwana. When I follow God. Ninapomfuata Mungu. God likes it. Mungu anaipenda. And he bless me. Na atanibariki. I can take care of any problem by the help of God. Naweza shughulikia tatizo lolote kwa msaada wa Mungu. Now this is a positive thinking in God. Haya ni mawazo mazuri kwenye Mungu. Is are those positive thinking very hard? Je, mawazo haya pia ni magumu? Ama. You know the Bible says guard above all things guard your heart. Eh eh maandiko yanasema kwamba juu ya vitu zote kuhusu moyo wako because your heart is the wellspring of your life. Oho juu ya mambo yote moyo wako ni wa dhamana manake ndani ya moyo mwako ndipo mumo chemichemi za uzima. Guard your heart. Kwa hivyo lazima ukaulinde moyo wako. So that negative thinking and negative feelings don't enter. Ili kwamba mawazo mabaya hisia mbaya isiingie katika moyo wako. Let me ask you. Wacheni niwaulizeni. If someone kick you, hit you. Eh kama mtu basi atakupiga, nukaona kenyo huko pata hii kondo. Kama mtu atakupiga teke akupige ngumi, what is most natural thought that will come out? Wewe katika mawazo yako ni kitu gani kitakuja kwenye mawazo yako? Mtu ametoka huko anakuteke ngume wewe utafanya nini? I don't like the person. That one thought is I don't like the person. Uh-huh. Wazo la kwanza ambalo litakuja kwako utasema huyo mtu simpendi. I I uh, this person is bad. Huyo mtu ni mbaya zaidi. I want to hit back. Na pia sisi ni lazima ni mgonge. Now there is one response. Eh eh huko ni kuitikia kwa kwanza. And as side the response another response is na kuitikia kwingine ni huku. He must have some reason that is unhappy. Ni lazima awe na sababu ambazo zimemfanya haja afurahishwe na mimi. I want to have compassion on him. Na mimi lakini nataka niwe na upendo kwake. I want to forgive him. Nataka nimsamehe. It doesn't matter that he kicked me. Haijalishi kwamba amenipiga. I won't die from it. Sitakufa. It doesn't matter. Haijalishi. I can bless him. Naweza kumbariki? Now, let me ask you. Haya niwaulizeni. The first response be angry, the second response to bless. Which one is natural if someone kick you? Aha. Kwenye hizi mitikio mbili ya kwanza mtu akikupiga unampiga na mtu akikupiga unasema unataka kumbariki. Ni gani ambayo inakuja kiasilia katika mawazo yako? Ya kwanza ama ya pili? Ya kwanza. The first one. Right. Because that is human nature. Manake hiyo ndi huo ndio uasili wa mwanadamu. That is our sinful nature. Ndio uasili wa udhambi wetu. Now, say this after me. Aya, rudia mambo haya nyuma yangu. Our sinful response is our natural response. Eh eh, kuitikia kwetu kwa njia mbaya ndio kuitikia kwetu kwa kiasilia ya dhambi. Tell them to say it with you. <laughs> It's too long, huh? Sinful response is a natural response. Aya urudie mambo haya nyuma. Unapoitikia kwa dhambi ndio hasilia yetu tuseme. Unapoitikia kwa dhambi ndio hasilia yetu. We need to take care of our problems before we have positive response. They have to repeat it. Yeah, they have to repeat it. So now come, come. Okay. Only when we take care of our problems that we can have godly response. Basi kama tunaweza shughulikia dhambi zetu ndipo tunaweza kuwa na muitikio wa Mungu. Tuseme Basi Okay, say say this again. Ah uh, sema hili tena. <laughs> say it again. Ninapo it you say. Okay. To you know to be willing to take care to, to take care of our problems it makes in take us you know we have to handle our problem before we can have godly response. Aha unapokutaka kupata muitikio wa Mungu lazima ushughulikie dhambi zako. So we understand our human nature. Ili ukwamba uelewe asili ya mwanadamu. Uelewe asili ya mwanadamu. 
Now you don't have to say after okay. us now. Okay. It's, it's, it's natural, natural for us to be angry. Kwa hivyo sisi kukasirishwa ni jambo la kiasilia tumeumbwa nalo. It's natural for us to be na uh, negative. Kwa hivyo sisi pia kuwa na mawazo kinyume ni jambo ambalo limeumbiwa ndani mwetu. We have to be consciously taking care of problems in our heart. Ni lazima tuwe watu ambao tunaweza kushughulikia mawazo mabaya yaliyomo mioyoni mwetu. Before we can change our life. Kabla tubadilishe maisha yetu. Do you agree with this? Unakubaliana na hili? Now say this say this with you. Aya murudie haya. We have to consciously take care of problems. Ni lazima ushughulikie matatizo yako. Lazima ushughulikie matatizo yako. Before our life will be changed by God. Kabla maisha yako yabadilishwe na Mungu. Kabla maisha yako yabadilishwe na Mungu. Do you agree? Unakubaliana yes. hilo? Yes. So we need to learn to take care of any negative thoughts. Kwa hivyo ni lazima tujifundishe jinsi ya kushughulikia mawazo kinyume. Any negative feelings. Isia zote za kinyume. Let me ask you, have you seen Christians they have all kinds of negative thoughts and emotions inside them? Je, ushawaiona mkristo ambaye ako na mawazo kinyume, hisia zake ni kinyume, ushawaiona? Have you seen that? Yes. Ushawaiona? If all day long they don't like people. Yaani kila siku hata anapokutana na mtu lazima mpigie kila ni mkristo. All day long they angry or sad. Yaani kila siku anapoona mtu anakasirishwa na ni mkristo. Will the, de- will the demons go away? The ma- je, mapepo itamwenda itamtoweka iende kweli? No. 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 The demons will stay. Mapepo yataka. Now, many years ago I drove out demons from a woman. Miaka mingi iliyopita kuna mapepo mwanamke aliyefukuza mapepo. She said that she could hear the demons talking to her. Yeah, alikuwa anasema kwamba angeweza kusikia mapepo akimuongelesha. And she could also feel the breath of the demons on her face. Na pia angehisi pumzi ya mapepo ikipita kwenye uso wake. And she can feel the demons walking on her bed. Na pia angehisi mapepo akitembea kwenye kitanda chake. So she asked for help. Sasa akaomba msaada. She's from another church. Anatoka kwenye kanisa nyingine. And the pastor of the church took her you know asked me to go and cast out demons. Na sasa huyo mchungaji akanichukua akanipeleka huko nifukuze mapepo. When I drove out the demons from her, nilipofukuza mapepo kutoka ndani mwake, she had all kind of manifestations. Yeye sasa akakuwa na udhihirisho wote. Now after that she was more peaceful. Na kutokelezea hapo akakuwa na amani. But again later she had the demon problem again. Lakini baadaye tena matatizo ya mapepo yakamrudia. I asked her what happened. Nikamuuliza kulifanyikaje? She said that she cannot forgive her husband. Akasema kwamba mimi siwezi nikamsamehe mume wangu. I said, do you want the demons to go out? Nikamuuliza je, ungelipenda mapepo yaondoke yaende? She said, yes, she want the demons out. Akasema ndio, nataka mapepo yaende. And then I said, are you willing to forgive your husband? Nikamuuliza na je, uko tayari kumsamehe mume wako? She said, no. Akasema hapana because he has been so bad for so many years. Kwa maana amekuwa mbaya kwangu kwa miaka mingi. She did not want to forgive. Hakutaka kumsamehe mume wake. When she did not forgive kwa basi kama hawezi akamsamehe mapepo haingeweza kwenda let me ask you who suffer wasini waulize ni nani anaendelea kuumia kati ya mume na mke who suffer mke alikataa kumsamehe mume wake na sasa kati hao watu wawili ni nani yako na mzigo mke wife yeah so she suffer because of that sasa yeye anatatizika kwa sababu ya hayo but she still doesn't want to forgive lakini na kazana hawezi akasamehe. Many years later I saw her. Miaka iliyopita tena akamuona. The same problem. Tatizo lile lile. And she said this. Na akasema haya. I can never forgive him. Siwezi nikamsamehe. He's so bad. Yeye ni mbaya. But what happened is, lakini kilichokifanyika ni she suffers a lot. Aliadhirika zaidi. Let me ask you. Wacha niwaulizeni. Do you like to suffer? Je, ungelipenda kuumia wewe? Do you like to suffer? No. Una, ungelipenda matatizo ya kufuate? No. So do you want to forgive people? Na je, ungelipenda kuwasamehe watu? Yes. To forgive people and bless people are the best way of li- living. 
Kusamehe watu na kuwabariki ndiyo njia mzuri ya kuishi. So I hope that you take care of any negative thoughts and feelings and sins. Natumainia kuamba utaondoa mawazo yote kinyume na isia zote kinyume. Anytime you notice any problem. Wakati wawote unako gundua tatizo. Ask God to forgive us. Uliza mungu wa kusamehe. And repent. Na ukatubu. And turn away from the sin. Na ukatoke kwenye njia ya dami. Some people repent like this. Watu wengi utubu sambri hii. God forgive me. Mungu ni samehe. I'm angry with someone please forgive me naomba unisamee and then after the prayer na baada ya maombi wakienda huko nje and they stare at the person again bado wako na ile hasira na is that real repentance je hiyo ni toba ya kweli kweli ah no now repentance is now the key to overcoming sin is hating the sin repentance is hating the sin ufunguo wa kushinda dhambi ni kutubu dhambi zako na kuzichukia dhambi amen now When you go to the toilet, do you hate the smell there? <laughs> you dislike the smell there, right? Je, ukienda kule msalani kule. Je, ungelipenda kukaa hapo uendelee kuhisi hiyo harufu? Now, if someone gives you a bowl of the tongue and give you to eat, let you eat it. Je, mtu akitoka huko na sahani ameweka samadi anakupea ukule utakula no. do you like it <laughs> ungelipenda ukula una yani unaburudika una enjoy do you like it una inusia nusia una unaipenda kweli no no let me ask you wasa nikuulize can you hate sin as you hate the tongue j unaweza kuchukia dhambi vile vile unavyochukia samadi ya ngombe do you hate sin the same way j unachukia dhambi kwa njia hiyo Now many people don't. Watu wengine sio kwamba wanachukia. They say he is so bad. Wanasema kwamba yeye ni mubaya. I'll hate him until I die. Nitamchukia mpaka nife. So what happened is they are hating themselves. Kile kinachofanyika ni kwamba wanajichukia wenyewe. Okay, let's stand up now. Haya tusimame tena. Yesu. Simama tuimbe Yesu. Yesu, Yesu, Yesu. Yesu, 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 ha 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 Nakupenda, 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 nakupenda. Yesu nakupenda, Yesu nakupenda. Okay, please be seated. Okay, please be seated. Let me ask you this question. Waza ni kuulize swala hili. I know it's warm. Najua ni joto leo. But are this teaching important? Naje, mafundisho haya ni muhimu. Yes. Is it? Tuketi chini. Is it workable? Je, na haya mafundisho yanaweza kufanya kazi? Now I told, I told you three secrets. Nimekuambia uh, siri tatu. One, don't eat garbage. Ya kwanza usikule taka. Second, take care of the sins when they are in your head. Ya pili shughulikia dhambi zilizo kwenye kichwa chako. Three. Ya tatu. Hey Sin as you hate the dung. Chukia dhambi sawa sawa na vile unavyochukia cho. Do you hate sin as you hate the dung? Je, unaweza chukia dhambi sawa sawa na vile unavyochukia cho? Yes. Now, so you understand that to help someone to have demons clear. So unaelewa kwamba kusaidia mtu kwamba asikuwe na mapepo. We need to have this teaching to help people. Ni lazima tuwe na mafundisho haya kusaidia watu. Week yes. after week. Juma baada ya juma. Mm. And 
Okay. Now we will stop here briefly and then tutasim, we'll come back again. Tutasimama right. kidogo alafu turudi tutapumzika alafu turudi tena. Okay, let us pray. Aya tuombe. Oh Lord Jesus, stand up, stand up. Tusimame wote kwa maombi. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. God is good. Yesu ni mwema. God is wonderful. Mungu ni wa ajabu. Mungu ni wa ajabu. God's way is the best. Njia ya Bwana ndio nzuri. When we want demons, when we want demons go out. Tukitaka mapepo yaende. Tukitaka mapepo yaende. We want to live in the love of God. Lazima tuishi kwa upendo wa Mungu. Lazima tuishi kwa upendo. We want to enjoy God. Lazima tukamshirikishe we want to have a good relationship with God. And we want to take care of sins. Negative. We want to take care of negative thinking and negative emotions. We want to live in the joy of the Lord. We want to enjoy God. Tunataka tukashereke mungu. Tunataka tukashereke mungu. And follow God's way of living. Na tutafuate njia ya mungu kwa kuishi. It's wonderful to follow God. Ni ajabu kumfuata mungu. Ni ajabu kumfuata mungu. Thank you, Jesus. Asante, Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Na kupenda, Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Kwa Yesu Christo tumeomba. Hallelujah.